If your child has behavioral issues, I almost guarantee they're not able to hold their breath for a long amount of time. So what I mean by that is you can have them take a deep breath in and let it all the way out. And when they let it all the way out, tell them to hold their breath and begin counting. And usually before they even get to about 10 seconds, they're ready to take that deep gasp in and get that air back. So in many instances, kids with behavioral issues uh, are over breathers. This means they breathe several times more per minute uh, than what would be considered normal. So they do this in large part because they're usually mouth breathers. They're going to be breathing in and out from their mouth. And when this becomes a habit, it throws off our carbon dioxide to oxygen ratios. If you imagine someone mouth breathing and over breathing, uh, it's reminiscent of like hyperventilating. So when you do this all day, your body begins to not use the oxygen even though it's available in your bloodstream because, because you're over breathing and you're breathing out all that carbon dioxide, your body actually will not want to use any oxygen because your carbon dioxide is already too low and it doesn't want to take in more oxygen and make it more lopsided. So when your body doesn't use oxygen efficiently, it begins to put your nerve system and your brain into a fight or flight state which can lead to behavioral issues. So when you're in a constant state of fight or flight and gas pedal and revved up, if you think about a time you were in a fight or flight state, you can understand how it's hard to regulate your emotions. So this is what the kids are dealing with with that behavioral issue. So if your child has behavioral issues, download our new cheat sheet. It's called the three underlying factors causing behavioral issues. We're going to talk more about how breathing affects your nerve system and whether you're in a fight or flight state or not.